Good day, I'm Patrick Lawler from Investec Wealth and Investment, and I'm joined today by uh, Thane Duff, who's a senior analyst also for Investec Wealth and Investment. Good day, Thane. Good morning, Patrick. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the uh, luxury goods market, uh, sort of trends, maybe look at some of the, uh, the e-tailing aspects of it as well. But let's kick off maybe talking about the economic environment, the global environment, particularly maybe in the Far East and elsewhere, and what this is doing to, to luxury goods. It's been quite an interesting market, Patrick, in that the really big brands, the Louis Vuittons, Hermes, uh, Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, all of those have performed quite well of late. The watch market has been under quite some pressure, and I think we'll touch on a bit later the structural changes affecting that market. And then your traditional lipstick uh, industry uh, perfume, uh, that has been holding up quite well. Regionally, China has recovered quite well. The Chinese consumer is back in a big way. They're growing double digit. Uh, the area that has been under a lot of pressure, which has affected uh, players, particularly like Richmond and Swatch, has been Hong Kong. Um, that watch market has come under a lot of pressure. Uh, and we've also seen quite a, quite a crackdown, I guess, in terms of spend in that market. Uh, the watch market being affected by the whole clampdown on gift giving by the Chinese government. And what about sort of new technology, sort of Fitbits and, and uh, the iWatch? What sort of impact has that had? As you said uh, earlier, it's, it, it's had quite a big impact on the watch market, particularly the entry level to the mid-level. Mm -hmm. um, brands like Mont Blanc and the Richemont stable are now doing their own smartwatch. Tag Heuer and the LVMH stable mm -hmm. have responded. Uh, Tissot and the Swatch uh, brand uh, stable, they've come out with a smartwatch. I, th I think certainly the uptake of smartwatches has taken the Swiss watch industry by surprise. Um, we've seen a raft of management changes where younger management are actually being brought into the watch companies, I think to try and connect and come up with a younger type product for what is a younger consumer base. So definitely it has had an impact. Let's look at something else that's had an impact uh, or could have an impact. And uh, what brought it to mind was Amazon's recent deal to buy Whole Foods and really the message they're sending is that no traditional retailer or seller of goods is safe anymore. How does e-tailing affect the, the luxury goods market? Again, a very big structural change. Um, the, the two traditional forms of retailing were your own stores. So things like Louis Vuitton and Cartier, you could only buy in those particular stores. You can't get them in travel retail or wholesalers. Uh, watches tended to be a mixture of own stores most recently, but that has been the one area where there's traditionally a very big wholesale channel. One thinks locally of your Arthur Kaplan's as an example. Um, perfumes continue to go through quite a large wholesale distribution channel, that won't be as affected. But certainly watches is the one that has been quite, quite affected in a material way. Um, I remember 15 years ago on a trip with Richmond in Geneva, they categorically stated they would never ever sell watches online. The most recent new model Cartier launch was given as an exclusive launch to an online retailer for a 30 day period before it was made available in all the other global Cartier stores. So again, coming back to management changes, younger management, uh, newer channels of distribution, e-tailing has had quite a big effect on the industry uh, and the way that they've had to react. Uh, things like Burberry, Coach, Pandora that have all had very big wholesale channels are now culling wholesale at a very rapid rate, uh, all with the intention of scaling up the e-offering that they've got uh, in an attempt to connect with this younger generation um, of consumers. Mm. Maybe look into the future, do you think they'll meet the challenge? Is there, is there good upside possibly to the luxury goods market without may, not maybe mentioning any particular brands or, or firms in particular, but do you think you know, the sector still has some value? Look, I think shorter term the disruption will still be there because you've got the A building out of e-tailing um, channels and B closures of the wholesale channel. So that will have some impact as that structural change plays through. But you're generally looking at a lot of long heritage brands, 
uh, that still have massive appeal if one looks at the size of the luxury goods industry. Uh, it's somewhere around about $200 billion annually. Uh, it continues to grow, uh, particularly as GDP per capita grows, um, as you have uh, rural, rural moving towards urban, and I'm thinking specifically of China here. Um, so the macro fundamentals in place for the industry uh, are still very much in place. Uh, but clearly we're going through a couple of speed bumps in the shorter to medium term as the industry adapts to a newer generation purchaser. Excellent, very interesting. Dan, so yeah, so interesting upsides for the, for, the, for the industry, but also, as you say, a few speed bumps along the way. Thank you very much, Dan, for joining us today. Thank you.